Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to just make an illustration and I have no idea what it's going to be. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I don't really have any ideas at the moment and I kind of wanted to just take you through my process of when I, when I know I want to draw something but I don't know what I want to draw. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm using my Illo sketchbook, I'll probably just do everything in here. And if you also want to draw while you watch this, feel free to do that. I had this one idea to do a bunch of little houses all stacked up on top of each other and have little critters. Well, I guess I do have an idea. I went outside and just thought about what I wanted to draw and I want to do some kind of house thing. Um, maybe sort of like a little like fairy garden type of house. Every time I want to film a video where I draw something kind of simple, I should be sketching in color. Um, I always end up overcomplicating it because once I have an idea, I'm like, this needs to be the best thing I've ever drawn. That's a cute idea. Having a house kind of on a tree stump. I need to remember to use ladders because ladders are very cute. Ladders and steps is all those kind of um, all those kinds of little details that I need to remember to include, like fences and. Um, patio stones and ch chimneys and maybe giant mushrooms. Some of these are so cute. Move this down so you can actually see a whole bunch of like different cute little fairy houses I'm gonna pull tiny ideas from. I'm not gonna take like one and then draw exactly that. You just mostly look at them generally for inspiration. That's kind of how people come up with ideas because everything comes from something. As long as you're not using one exact photo, then and you're, it's more of like a collage of your own ideas and um, parts of the world and inspiration from places, then there's nothing wrong with that. If, I ha if I'm on a time crunch, like you don't always have as much time, like all the time in the world to come up with the best possible idea, which is why it's good to do a lot of sketches in a really short amount of time and to keep them simple so you can think of as many ideas as possible. So what's the basic like silhouette I want this to have? Probably going from... Mm, I'm thinking it'll be kind of like an isolated sort of center composition um, with kind of space around it. So it's more of like a decorative, like it's not a full scene, it's like one thing in the middle. And maybe I'll have different tiers of houses that'll start wide and get smaller because that's how things sort of stack. Maybe there's some houses inside the rock down here, some fences. Maybe there's a A-frame sort of house at the top. I used to be afraid to draw houses because it's one of those things, um, at least in the art circle that I followed, um, and all the beginner artists and stuff like that when I was still first learning it was like the big thing like backgrounds and oh my gosh perspective and oh my gosh I'll never be able to do that that's so hard but it's just like drawing anything else it's not that big of a deal if you just do it and just try it and don't think of it as some as this big thing at least for me that's how I felt but I know a lot of people this is their favorite thing to draw and now it kind of is one of my favorite things to draw but as a beginner it wasn't what I was focused on like some people might only draw animals so drawing people seems like the ultimate um challenge and like it's so hard like whatever you're not used to drawing is what you'll find difficult so that's kind of an interesting composition i spent too long on that i really like square compositions um they're hard to do but i just like squares they just feel cool i don't know how else to describe it it must be an aesthetic thing because this, this sketchbook is a square, so it actually would be cool to do a square one to fill the page. Or maybe I don't have to show the whole thing, it's just a crop in of it. I don't really know what I want it to be. Maybe I'll do a stump here. So maybe the roots can come down. The scale is probably going to be all over the place with this. Because um, I like to imagine everything that lives here is sort of the same size so the mice and the frogs and like the birds and all them will be all the same size i might come back here later and just draw some more houses just to make the page look and i'm gonna try to sketch and line art and color all on this page i think it's good practice for me to do that like i did with this 
last week's drawing or this week's drawing earlier this week. So that was 18 minutes, probably cut down a lot of me deciding what to do, doing some thumbnails, a bit of research, and then getting started. And just just doing that amount of work up front can really help you if you're just wanting to draw something quick. Like it's not something you're gonna put hours into, but you still wanna make a nice little illustration. If this turns out, I'll make a print of it. So if you wanna print, if it turns out, <laughs> I will put them up on my shop. I make my own prints now because I just invested in a nice printer. Um, Cause it kind of worked out that if you get a really nice printer, you have more options for refilling ink because more people, um, well, they have like separate colored cartridges and there's actually a brand that makes ink that's pretty um, high quality for being off-brand ink. Um, so like the more popular it is and nicer, the more options there seems to be. So I just got the printer that everyone has, which is the Canon Pixma Pro 100. And I can actually refill the ink and it's going to be a way cheaper system for making stickers and stuff than I use with my old printer and it, they will look nicer too. It's nice to not have to worry about ink costs as much. I'm wondering if I should not use my Illo and if I should use, but I'm making this too complicated now. So this just became a little more involved than I was planning, which always happens when I put a lot of time into the sketch. So I'm going to transfer this to the watercolor paper and then paint it. I think what I'm going to do, I ended up scanning my sketch in and making it bigger and doing all the stuff I usually do. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is just trace out the basic outline with a colored pencil, probably this, um, I just said colored pencil instead of pencil crayon. Um, with this terracotta Prismacolor color race pencil and I'm once I'm done doing the basic outline I'm probably gonna take it off the light box and then do all the details which I've been really liking lately so I'm excited about that so I'm just doing the lines thought I'd try pencil but I think I should have done color instead of pencil, but that's okay. I want to move where I put the snail to a different place. Let's just look up a quick reference for just a normal, regular snail. I always have to remind myself of how their shell kind of works. <laughs> so I want to put it over here instead. And whatever door this is, is kind of like a low door. So whatever lives in here is probably some kind of a short little animal. Just made a, another iced coffee, but it's decaf this time because I don't need that much caffeine in one day. <laughs> I want it to be very um, earthy, golden, kind of greens and golds and not really gold, but like sunshiny sort of colors. I think some green would be nice to pull in now. I like to wet the paper first so I don't get any harsh edges when I'm first figuring out um, where I'm gonna lay down all the colors. Gonna mix in some nice stony gray colors for the houses. This house should be dark because the roof will be light. Probably this house will be dark too. Might want this brown to be a different shade because it's a tree trunk. I don't want all the browns to be the same. I do have a brown paint, but I don't use it straight out of the tube. I like to mix purple into it or blue or other colors depending on what kind of brown I want it to be. Purpley browns I think are really nice. Let's make him a purpley frog. He can be any color he wants to be and I think he wants to be purple. So I think this needs to be a light color, maybe like a peachy kind of brown. Yeah, something like that. That butterfly at the top is a monarch, but I might wanna um, not make it such a bright orange.
Trying to include some darker colors now because it's always important to have a balance of darks and lights. The green dulled down so much, I have to add more green in everywhere. A little bit in the caterpillar too. Add some nice details to the squirrel. Do a nice shadow under here. Bringing the yellow back to places that lost the yellow. Oh, and the mouse has green on him and that's no good. remember to not outline around the whole outside only in the places where it needs it and to not just mindlessly go in and try to fix it all. I also like to add in a bit of lightness on some areas that need it with the pencil crayon. Adding some little rock details to this little house here. I think I need a bit of purple there. Mix that up. I kind of want to make the background um, have a color to it. Almost like a very light orange. I think that kind of warms it up nicely. So I think that's pretty much it. I don't want to ruin it with final touches. It's not the most um, thought out, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out for the amount of planning I put into it. Um, there's some parts that would change, of course, but it's always that way. <laughs> I feel like parts of it don't have a very clear focal point, like you're not quite sure where you should look um, or what's important, but I have been staring at it for a while, so I don't really know how it really looks, if that makes any sense. I also have a Patreon where I send out um, prints every month and stickers and stuff and you get to see sketchbook PDFs and updates about me and my channel and all sorts of stuff on my Patreon and have an online store. So I really hope you enjoyed seeing my full process for creating this and I'll see you in my next video.